Hey everybody, it's Brian at Summit Racing here, and in this upcoming video, we're gonna show you a little bit about how to determine pushrod length. There's a couple ways to do it. There's one that you can do on an engine that's already assembled with the real valve springs and everything. It's okay, it's not super accurate. We have this entire engine apart. We can put checking springs on it. We can do everything absolutely perfectly, so why not? Let's go ahead and do that. So just be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell if you wanna see some more cool videos like this one. Now that we've got our long block assembled, the heads have been torqued down for the final time, we thought that this would be a good time to show you how to set up your lifter preload. Uh, anytime you're running a cam with more lift, you'll find it's necessary. Sometimes you might even need to have two different uh, push rod lengths in one engine if you have a big split between the lift on the intake lobe and the exhaust lobe. This is because with more lift, you're gonna have a smaller base circle. And with that, we'll just go ahead and get into the, uh, the steps necessary to uh, find that measurement and get your push rods on order. Okay, the first step is determining, basically setting up your adjustable push rod. Uh, most push rods in an LS engine start off around 7395, uh, and so you, you know that that's a good place to start knowing that with a higher lift cam that it's always going to be something longer than 7395. Uh, the most exotic piece of equipment here that we're going to use is a, uh, a dial caliper that's uh, bigger than your standard uh, 6 inch one. Uh, we're going to use a 9 incher here. Uh, I've got the caliper set at 7385 right now and we'll show you basically the technique that we use to go ahead and slide the push rod through the motion and uh, you know, basically take steps towards finding zero lash on the engine. Note that we've got our uh, dial caliper basically set up here for 7350. Uh, I've got the push rod at an angle uh, between the jaws here. Um, I, would, I do wanna point out something here is uh, a lot of the adjustable push rods you'll find, they're, the ones that are actually you know, internally threaded, those are definitely the nicest ones but they have a tendency to rotate. So we stick a little bit of uh, black electrical tape, works really good. Uh, that way, once we get this thing set, we tape it down, and that way we know it's not gonna move between our, the times we measure it. Uh, so the next step, we're gonna go ahead and take this, and if you wanna watch our uh, number right over here, you're gonna start seeing it climb as I straighten the push rod between the jaws of the caliper. Keeping on going, 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 going. And when it stalls out, that is basically how long the uh, checking push rod length is. In this case, I've got it set up for 7390. It's a little bit short, but we'll go ahead and use it just to kind of get a start here uh, over at the rocker. Okay, we've got the push rod length. Uh, we've got the adjustable push rod in there now. Uh, again, set up at that 7390 number. Uh, I've got the bolt in there a little bit, but I'm, I'm basically taking it down to zero. And I'm kind of listening to it. And I want to make sure that, you know, this, I, I feel it when that bolt starts to snug up. Still has a lot of lash. And now I've got this thing fairly tight. And as we expected, have quite a bit of lash there even yet. So we're going to go ahead and take this rocker back off, take our adjustable push rod back out. And we're going to go ahead and lengthen it in approximately 5,000 increments until we find the one where uh, all the, uh, the lash is gone. Okay, so we've uh, taken our caliper back down. Uh, we've opened it up something closer to 7400. Let's take a look and see what the number actually is. Seven four hundred on the nose. Got a little lucky there. We're gonna go ahead and take this back and see if our uh, lash is closer to disappearing. Okay, with a seven four hundred in there, tightening down, tightening down. And definitely less lash than before, but we still have some. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that uh, push rod another uh, five to ten thousandths, probably five. See where she goes. Okay, here we're going to aim for something closer to seven four ten. Doing our sweep. A little long, seven four thirteen. Uh, every little bit of that turn counts, so 7413 is our present number. Let's see where that takes us. Okay, now we've got the 7.413 push rod in there, and I do have this thing touching down, and I have just a little bit of lash left in there. I think my next uh, shot I'm going to aim for here is a, a 7420, and that should be about right. We'll find out. All right, going for 7420, doing our sweep.
Man, we're good. 7421, okay, let's pop this thing in here and see how it feels. Okay, so the next step, uh, we've, we've got this thing, uh, the push rod is set at 7420. I don't have the bolt completely uh, torqued down into place yet. Obviously, I have quite a bit of lash there. I'm gonna go ahead and walk it down, make sure I don't feel any preload on the lifter. Uh, it, you'll feel it getting snug. And uh, now, I've got that thing in there pretty tight. Got a little bit of side to side movement, but I have no vertical movement. I, I think it's dead nuts uh, at 7420. So we've achieved zero lash uh, with the, uh, the checking push rod coming in at 7.420. That is not the push rod that you need though. Remember that we need to have anywhere between 50 to 75 thousandths uh, worth of preload on the lifter. Uh, so we're gonna order a push rod that's 50 to 75 thousandths longer than that. It just so happens that a 7.475 is in that zone, a little bit on the short side, uh, and a 7500 is a little bit on the long side, but you know, coming in roughly 80 thousandths or so preload on the lifter, it's gonna be just fine. Be a little bit better at high RPM. We hope you enjoyed that video. It's, it's kind of cool because not all cylinder heads are the same. Some of them are aftermarket and they're designed for different push rod lengths. Some of them have been milled, etc. This was a great way for you to be able to know right off the bat and be very certain about the kind of lifter preload that you want to achieve. So if you want to see some more cool videos like that, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And thank you for watching.